There are three main types of vector interactions that occur with matter, such as human tissue, which are relevant to medical imaging, and they are elastic or coherent scattering, photoelectric absorption, and Compton scatter. And so in the next three videos, I'll be telling you all about these interactions with a particular focus on photoelectric absorption and Compton scatter, because they're more important and you'll come to see why. I've linked those two videos down below. But for now, let's start with this very short explainer on elastic scattering. So elastic scattering, or sometimes called coherent or Rayleigh scattering, occurs when an incoming X-ray collides with atoms in the tissue being imaged, causing them to change direction without losing any energy. And the process gets its name from the British mathematician and physicist Rod Rayleigh, who first described it in the late 19th century. Elastic scattering occurs with relatively low energy and accounts for only 10% of X-ray interactions and results in no change of energy. That is, the energy of the incoming X-ray photon is completely conserved. However, there is directional change, hence the term elastic. Now, this conservation of energy only occurs when the incoming X-ray photon has a less energy than the binding energy of the electrons in the human tissue's atoms. Now, you may think all energy X-rays are high, and that's true, but it's all relative. In my previous video, where I talked about characteristic and bremsstrahlung radiation, we saw that there was a wide range of these energies created with bremsstrahlung radiation, depending on how the incoming X-ray photon interacted with the nucleus of the target material's atoms. And although most of the low energy or soft X-rays were filtered out, either inherently or by additional filtration, it doesn't remove 100% of them. So that's where these low energy X-rays originate from. Now, elastic scattering is not really the major X-ray interaction and process that occurs in radiography because the energies typically used are higher. What's interesting is that the probability of it occurring is directly proportional to the atomic number squared. That is exponentially more likely to occur with heavier atoms, but then also inversely proportional to the energy of the X-ray photons. As the energy increases, we're less likely to get elastic scattering from occurring and it kind of dies down inherently. And that's why it only accounts for about 10% of X-ray interactions. All right, that's it for elastic scattering. Again, not the dominant X-ray interaction in medical imaging. And remember, it only really accounts for those low energy X-rays. Now let's move on to the next X-ray interaction, which is quite important. And that is the photoelectric effect. So click here to watch that. I'll see you there.